My name is Brad Call. I'm the Skaronsky Chair of Lymphoma Research at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health and the Associate Director for Clinical Research at the UW Carbone Cancer Center. Dr. Brad Call has authored and contributed to clinical research articles for blood. The biggest single part of my job is just caring for lymphoma patients and a fraction of my lymphoma patients end up on clinical research studies. This study looked at a novel drug for the treatment of mantle cell lymphoma called idelalisib. It is a PI3 kinase inhibitor that specifically targets the delta isoform of PI3 kinase. It was one of the very first agents in this class in development and it was the first time this class of agents had been studied in mantle cell lymphoma. So to be honest, we had no idea what to expect. The patient population, by the way, was mantle cell lymphoma that has relapsed after standard therapies. Uh, outcomes are generally not very good for those patients. We enrolled 40 patients. They received a variety of doses and schedules of the idelalisib. We tried doses from 50 milligrams a day all the way up to 300 milligrams a day. Uh, we settled on a dose of 150 milligrams twice a day. Uh, the drug is oral, so it's a pill. It turned out to be well tolerated. Uh, we had some patients who experienced diarrhea, but most of the patients tolerated it very well. Mantle cell lymphoma is a B cell lymphoma. It turns out many B cell lymphomas receive survival signals through something called the B cell receptor. And then the B cell receptor signals through the cell cytoplasm down to the cell nucleus through a variety of uh, biochemical pathways, one of which involves PI3 kinase, which then signals through something called AKT, which then signals through something called mTOR. And there was reason to believe that if you could interrupt that pathway, that perhaps that would be enough to make mantle cells want to die in a patient. Uh, so that, that was the rationale for testing a PI3 kinase inhibitor in mantle cell lymphoma. There was preclinical evidence suggesting that this was a rational thing to do. The response rate for idelalisib in this phase one clinical trial was uh, 40%, which we viewed as very favorably. It, it really proved the concept that targeting PI3 kinase in mantle cell lymphoma is a viable strategy. If you look at the waterfall plots in the paper, you can see that about 80% of people had some clinical benefit from the drug. But interestingly, the responses were not terribly durable. It's so one of the real challenges with mantle cell lymphoma. The mantle cells have a, a pretty unique ability to acquire resistance. The median progression-free survival in the study was only about four months, and that begs the question of, of why or what is happening there. What is the mechanism of resistance? And we don't know the answer to that. Uh, there's some cell line data that would suggest that these mantle cells can upregulate other PI3 kinase isoforms such as PI3 kinase alpha and so that might be a mechanism of escape for these cancer cells. So I think the next steps will be to find rational combinations of a PI3 kinase inhibitor with other agents or dual PI3 kinase inhibitors that hit a variety of isoforms so that we could see these high response rates but hopefully avoid the situation where the cells, cancer cells are developing resistance you know, a few short months after starting the therapy. We're just getting those types of studies underway.